Introduced in the 1976 model year, Cadillac Seville became an instant success as a new smaller upper-end luxury vehicle. The Seville measured about 204 inches in overall length and just 114 inches in wheelbase and was built atop to really a stretched Chevy Nova platform. However, despite its humble beginnings, the Seville actually drove extremely nicely and had a lot of refinements over that Chevrolet Nova upon which it was based. It also had a style unto its own and really introduced a new direction for General Motors styling, frankly, for about the next 10 to 15 years to come after the Seville was introduced in 1976. The 1976 to 79 Seville introduced what General Motors called the so-called sheer look. And that was this look with sheer forms, relatively little curves overall, and a very formal roof line with this vertical C-pillar that you see here, similar to this particular 1978 Seville Elegante. As the Seville would go on from its 1976 introduction, some models were introduced like this 1978 Elegante that I think are especially beautiful. The Elegante looked great, I think, in part because it didn't have a vinyl roof, which is a relative rarity on the Cadillac Seville, in large part because Cadillac was pushing its dealer body to order Seville's with a vinyl roof. It saved them considerably on metal finishing time. However, this 78 Seville Elegante, I think, is truly elegant, and this black over top of silver paint scheme just makes the car stand out and pop, obviously coupled with the real wire wheels. These are not wire wheel discs. These are, in fact, real wire wheels. However, the interior of the Seville Elegante held a couple surprises. The first was this perforated leather seating areas, as well as perforated leather door panels. These were not available on the standard Seville, though you could get leather seating areas. The second was that center console that you see there, again, an exclusive to the Elegante, and it contained a notepad as well as a pen, so you could make little notes as you went driving. You also got this leather wrap steering wheel as opposed to a steering wheel with a hard plastic rim. You also got deluxe Tampico carpet, which was super rich and plush, and the seats had unique head restraints on them, different from the normal seating in the 78 Seville. But there were a bunch of cool features that the Seville Elegante had, and let's talk about a few of those to begin with. The first was an illuminated entry system that not only turned on the interior lights for a specified period of time, but also illuminated the keyholes on either side of the vehicle with the lights that you see here in the bottom side of the door handle. I think this was a cool touch. Cadillac on the subsequent generation, as opposed to having a light that would illuminate the keyhole, would actually illuminate the keyhole itself, which again, I thought was an interesting solution. You could also get an outside temperature thermometer that was mounted to the driver's side outside rear view mirror, as you see here, and obviously would kind of take the temperature of the ambient air, and you could see what the temperature was just looking out your window. The cool part about this outside thermometer was that it also would illuminate at night when you turned the headlights on. So you could see the temperature day or night. And all Seville's came equipped with Cadillac's lamp monitor system. This was mounted in either side of the driver or passenger fender, and it allowed you to see if the turn signal was working as well as the regular headlamp as well as the bright light. The turn signal being the amber light, the regular light being the white light and the bright light being the blue light here. There also were lamp monitors mounted in the rear of the vehicle in the headliner that the driver could see in the rear view mirror just to check to see if the tail lamps were working and the turn signals were working as well. But in my mind, the coolest optional feature for the 1978 Seville was one that was introduced in that particular model year and that was, as you see here, the Cadillac Trip Computer. Now recall that this was the early days of electronics in cars. Many things, even the automatic climate control systems in the Seville were really mostly mechanically based with bimetallic springs and vacuum. They were not yet electronic as they would be in the subsequent years. However, some systems on the 1978 Seville were electronic and computer controlled, including the fuel injection system for the 350 cubic inch V8 that was under hood. This V8, interestingly, was not a Cadillac-sourced V8. It actually was an Oldsmobile-sourced V8 engine, but Cadillac put an exclusive fuel injection system on it. It was actually a multi-port V8 
fuel injection system that I believe was co-developed with Bosch. And in any case, it operated very, very well and endowed the Seville with about 180 horsepower, which for the time was quite good in this relatively small, although heavy vehicle at 4,200 pounds. Buyers tended to like this fuel injection system, though, and it proved relatively robust for the era. It was not flawless. But the fact that the vehicle came equipped with electronic fuel injection and an onboard computer enabled Cadillac to really put this new piece of gadgetry in its vehicles. And that, as I mentioned, was the Cadillac trip computer. And here's an advertisement from 1978 talking about the trip computer, which it mentions is available on both the Seville and El Dorado. Although I will say I've never seen this in El Dorado. I've only seen it in Seville's and very rarely at that. Now, when a buyer ordered the trip computer, a couple things changed out. The first was that the standard analog speedometer changed out for a digital speedometer, as you see here. And also the clock, which was in the middle of the instrument panel, would change out for this digital display, which could display the clock. As you see, that's one of the buttons on the 12 function keypad. Now, the first thing that you would do if you wanted to take a trip is you would depress the reset button at the upper right there twice. And once you did that, the digital display would effectively display four dashes or would be zeroed out. And that would also zero out the average miles per gallon, speed, and time to destination. Then you would punch in the approximate miles that you were going to drive after depressing the enter button. And once you did that, the trip computer was really locked into how far did you have to travel, and it could calculate a number of functions based on what you entered, as well as the average vehicle speed and the average miles per gallon that the vehicle was obtaining. So for instance, let's say you pressed that miles per gallon button, the number one there at the top left. What happened is for the first four seconds, your average mile per gallon over the trip would be say, and then after that, the instant miles per gallon over the last average, I would say about eight seconds would be displayed. So that button displayed both the average as well as the instant miles per gallon. Button number two would display your average speed over the trip. Button number three would display how long you have been driving. Button number four was a range function, and that allowed you to see, based on the average miles per gallon thus far, and the amount of fuel in the tank, what your lasting range was going to be before you needed to fill up. Button five was the miles to the destination, based on the mileage that you entered, less the miles that had been traveled. Button six was the estimated time of arrival that you would arrive based on the average speed as well as the miles left in your trip. Then functions 7, 8, and 9 were really different engine functions where you could see the RPM, you could see the engine temperature, as well as the battery voltage. So not only did this give you a trip computer, it also gave you some gauges that you otherwise couldn't get in the Seville. There really were just idiot lights in the Seville. There was nothing that would show your RPM or volts or the engine temperature. I guess Cadillac just thought that the buyers of the Seville didn't need a tachometer. Other interesting thing down here, by the way, while we're looking at this particular picture, notice on the radio on the leftmost knob behind it, there's a switch that you can activate and it says local and distant. Well, that would raise the power antenna to different levels, the mass of the power antenna that is to different levels. If you just had it on local, it would raise about a third of the way. And the assumption there was that you were only trying to tune in local stations, so you didn't need the antenna mast all the way up. If you put it on distance when you turn on the radio, the antenna mast would go all the way up, and then you could presumably get stations that were farther away. Now, another interesting thing here is I found a picture of this Cadillac trip computer in a Canadian vehicle. So obviously the Americans would care about miles per gallon, but if you're in Canada... It's the metric system by 1978, and so liters per 100 kilometers was effectively what you would look at for fuel efficiency, and you can see that the miles per gallon button here actually says liters per 100 kilometers. So this is a super rare Canadian version, and I'm guessing they used the same of these for export, although I can't imagine that Cal actually sold too many of these Seville's overseas, although it probably sold better than most any other Cadillac due to its so-called international size. And you notice that the trip computer also has a switch there at the right to toggle between English and metric units. So 
That would be a feature that would continue on the Cadillac digital displays in subsequent years, whether you bought the car in the U.S. or Canada. My 1984 Seville is an example. I can switch between the English and the metric units, but just an interesting feature. And here's a picture of this trip computer in a 1979 Eldorado. As I mentioned, I haven't seen one of these really in an Eldorado. I was able to find one picture. It's obviously located right above the climate control in the middle of the dashboard. And in 1979, both on the Eldorado and the Seville, you got this horrible faux burl wood grain trim. I much prefer the faux wood grain that was used in the 1978 year and before in these vehicles. And there you have it. So super cool and quirky feature of these late first generation Seville's. And these cars overall really are, I would say, excellent vehicles. Certainly were styling trendsetters for their time. And despite the fact that they were based on the Nova platform, if you drive one, you honestly do not know that it has those humble beginnings. And it's unfair to call it just a Nova platform. Yes, that's what Cadillac started with, but there's so much more sound deadening and ride isolation technology in the Seville that it really is a great driving vehicle. The suspension is somewhat stiff, not too soft. It handles relatively well, has a pretty, I would say, fast steering gear ratio, I believe about 14 to 1, which was comparable to sports cars of the era. So there's no, of course, road feel, but the car does drive very well. It is an internationally sized vehicle, so it's pretty trim. The only downside is if you're a taller person, these vehicles are small on the outside as well as the inside. There's not a lot of interior space, and the transmission tunnel hump really intrudes on the footwell. So if you're a relatively, let's say, larger person, taller, etc., you might want to make sure that you sit in one of these Seville's before you buy one because they just don't have the interior room of the full-size vehicles. Let's close out now with a commercial from the late 1970s featuring a famous golfer talking about the Cadillac Seville and also featuring this trip computer. The pilot of this jet set a world record for the fastest flight around the globe in a business plane. At the controls, Arnold Palmer. On the ground, Arnie sits behind a different type of control panel, the instrument panel of a Seville by Cadillac. It's equipped with Cadillac's new trip computer, the most sophisticated onboard computer system available in any production car. It shows your speed with digital computer accuracy, and at the touch of a button tells how many miles to your destination, your estimated time of arrival, your average speed for the trip, and much more, such as your engine RPM, and your average miles per gallon for the trip and right now. That's Trip Computer, available exclusively with Seville. Just one more way Cadillac sets an American standard for the world.